Scotch, I'm just going to turn off my camera and my mic, make some okay. noise here. I'll be back in a sec. All right. I ran. Yes, Dr. Lou, so good to see so many people from different parts of the world. <laughs> it's 3 a.m. <laughs> you see how committed teachers My they have all around. My gosh. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> Enjoy the breakfast together with our webinar then. How about people from Brazil? I saw somebody from Petrópolis, Minas Gerais, Denise Santos. Hello, Denise. Very, very good to have you all. All right, so we already have 77 people with us. I think it's time to start. Thank you very much for coming to today's webinar. I'm Katja Valli, Schools and Exams Marketing Manager here at Cambridge University Press. Today's webinar is going to be about critical thinking and identity development with Paulo Machado. Let me tell you a little bit about Paulo. Paulo Machado is an author and content editor of materials for English and as a foreign language and bilingual programs. He's also an academic consultant and teacher in several contexts from basic education schools to public and private universities. Undergraduate in social communications with a, a graduate degree in applied linguistics and a PhD in visual arts. In Game Changer, our new teammate series, Paulo has collaborated in the scope and sequence design, content review, and also in the alignment of the material to the Base Nacional Comum Curricular, our BNCC. Good afternoon, Paulo. Hey, Katja, how are you today? I'm good. What about you? Oh, I'm great. I'm great. Happy to be here with you once again and talking to all these marvelous people around many places in the world, right? We have people from Myran, from all South America, Brazil. That's great. Yes, Thank you all for being here with us. Thank you so, so much, Paul. Well, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, you will uh, see that here in, in Zoom, we have the questions and answers tool. So if you have questions, to Paulo, please use the questions and answer tool, right? The Q and A. And uh, by the end of the presentation, in the chat tool, we will post a link so that you can give your feed, you can give us feedback to this webinar, and also get your certificate for this session. So, with no further ado, I, I'll pass the floor to you, Paulo. Over to you. Have a good Thank presentation. You. Thank you, Katja. Thank you, Katja. 
Hello, people. Hello, colleagues from Brazil and from many other places. I have seen many people from South America here, from Paraguay, Peru, Ecuador, Argentina. Thank you so much for being here. And I must tell you that it's always an anxious moment, right? I always, you know, you have, you always feel this thrill before you start talking to people. And it's so good to be here. Today, we are talking about competencies. And the name of our talk is Developing Competencies to Change the Game, Identity and Critical Thinking. Well, uh, we are going to have a list of what we will do today. We will start talking about educational policies and more specifically about the BNCC for those of you who are our friends who are not from Brazil, don't think this is going to be too specific about Brazil's policies, because what we have here uh, since like five years ago, uh, it, this is a global trend. So schools and educational systems all over the world are designing their educational policies based on the notion of competencies, right? So this is not just for us Brazilians. So besides educational policies, then we're going to address the notion of competencies uh, we, and we will talk about identity, critical thinking. And to illustrate all that, we're going to bring examples of this brand new series by Cambridge University Press named Game Changer. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed the talk. And again, if you have questions, we can use the chat. I, I, sometimes I'm going to be looking at the chat over here. If I, if I can't do that properly, anyhow, we're going to have some time at the end of the talk so you can have your questions. We can interact a little bit more. OK, so again, thank you for being here. And I have a series of uh, different ladders here in front of me, and this refers to when I first started teaching in regular schools in Brazil. It was some time ago, I must you know, assume that was actually more than 25 years ago. And at that time, uh, the design of curricula was pretty much based on what we teachers or our coordinators would think that was necessary. Yes, it was, everything was based on our personal experiences and was based on our representations of reality and what we thought, the concepts that we had that would be important for our students. Sometimes even the design of the curricula would be solely based on the scope and sequence of textbook and instructional materials. Well, it was okay, but what happened was in a big country like ours, we would have so many inequalities all over the country, you know, because what I would work on my classroom would be different from what Katya, for example, would work on hers. So there has been an effort by the Brazilian state by means of its Ministry of Education to try to have a common ground for the design of the curricula all over the country. So then that's when the BNCC, the Base Nacional Curricular, comes about, right? As, you know, as a document, as an official document to define and to assure that all learners have their essential learnings and integral development uh, fostered assured. And then this is all based on the general competences of based education, which is already aligned in the, the what we call the LDB, the Lei de Diretrizes e Bases da Educação Nacional, and then in this, in its first paragraph in the PNE, the National Plan of Education. So we have the LDB, the Lei de Diretrizes e Bases, giving birth to the Plano Nacional de Educação, the National Plan of Education. And this 
with the work of many specialists from all walks of the educational spectrum, uh, gave birth to the BNCC, right? And then uh, when we have this system based on competences, I like to look at this picture as a metaphor, right? And what I see when I look at it is, well, it's very peculiar. I would like to ask you, my friends, what do you see? What is the relationship? of all these shiny and round pebbles that you see in this picture in front of you and the design of the curricular. Is there any analogy that you can make? You can write in the chat. I have the chat over here. Okay, uniqueness, that's interesting. That's really interesting, uniqueness, because we need to respond to local accents, local colors, local nuances, right? Yes, in fact, what we have here, we have a whole bunch of round, shiny, colorful, and probably wet pebbles laying on the beach. And this refers to the notion of competences and the guidelines. So the guidelines and the competences developed in the curricula, they must be common. That is, the whole system responds to the same competences and guidelines. But the curricula need to respond to the uniqueness of the local peculiarities, yes? Of my specific students in my specific context. So the activities and the proposals respond to the common competences, but they address local, I like this word, uniqueness. Going on, this is not new. This is not something that is original from Brazil or from Peru, yes? This is something that responds to the international agencies orientation for an education for global citizenship. So they, the United Nations, UNESCO, what they do is they write documents and policies that recommend that educational policies worldwide are written having competences as the solid ground on which to stand on. But then this, you know, leads us to a question, but okay, but what is competency? Competency or competence, there are synonyms, right? Can you tell me what competence is? What is that for you? Thinking about it for 10 seconds, you can think that's a lot of time. Well, competency. According to the BNCC and to the strands that I just mentioned to you, is something very practical. Yes, competency is the application of knowledge, is the application of skills, of attitudes and values into real life, into the life of work, into citizenship, and into, you know labor in our everyday life. So what we have to have in mind is we have a whole curriculum system based on competences, which is the applic, it's not only the building of knowledge. It's not only the development of skills, but it's the application of those knowledge and skills into reality. Right? Good. Well, so then being competent is being able to activate and use built knowledge when facing a situation or problem. I like this notion of built knowledge. Yes, we should stress that because uh, we don't transmit knowledge. We build knowledge. And how do we build knowledge? Through interaction. Yes, in interaction, I build knowledge. Interaction with myself, 
interaction with my peers, interaction with the environment, interaction with the, my materials, the instructional materials, in the interaction with myself and with the other in the world is that knowledge is built. That's a beautiful concept. And then why teach based on competences? Okay, we have all these policies that recommend and tell us that we, our curricula and what we do in the classroom must be based on competences, but why? Well, if we recall that competences is the practical application of knowledge, we're going to get to the concept that we need and we want to transform society. We need to make an impact on society and making it better and better and better, right? Increasingly fair, increasingly democratic, inclusive, diverse, and sustainable. What's interesting is, well, until now I talked about the BNCC, the uh, Base Nacional Comum Curricular, which is a Brazilian official document. But as I told you, worldwide, and according to the recommendation of the international agencies, educational policies have been based on competences. And it's not a coincidence that Cambridge University Press has developed its own framework of competences, which is called Cambridge Life Competences, which from now on, embases all instructional materials by Cambridge University Press. So you can see that how this uh, how this is in tandem, the Cambridge Life Competences Framework is in tandem with the BNCC and it's in tandem with educational policies all over the world. This is one global movement. According to the Cambridge Life Competences Framework, we should teach based on competences because we need to work together with people. Yes, we need to think creative. The, the, the problems that we face are more and more complex. Yes, we, so we need to analyze all the sources. We need to have a critical perspective about things. This is why, and we need to communicate our points of view effectively in a way that we can foster friendship and try to manage all the conflicts that are such a complex world as the one we live in originate. Yes, we live in a conflictless world and we need to be able to deal with that and try to build a better society. So you see how things go together. Look, we need a positive mindset. Yes, and we need to, to be optimistic about the future that lies ahead of us. And we also have the mission to influence our learners in that sense, if you agree with me, of course. So as we can see, this is another picture that I use as a metaphor. And this is teaching English, yes, in such a context. So as you can see, we don't teach only the language, yes? There are so many concepts embedded in language teaching that we need to consider. So I could say that the pedagogical, the ethical, and why not the political aspects of teaching, they are intertwined, yes? There is no naive discourse. There is no naive discourse. And even the language, yes, we need to have a critical view about the language we teach. Yes, the BNCC tells us that we don't teach a foreign language when you teach English. That's an interesting concept, not a foreign language. Because when I'm talking about a foreign language, what I'm saying is, wow, I'm teaching the language of hegemonic countries, which I'm not. So I need to have those cultural standards 
as values to be learned, to be followed, to be imitated. On the contrary, when we assume English as an, an international language or as a lingua franca, what we have, we have the English of everybody. Yes, not only the hegemonic countries, but we have access to so many cultural repertoires. I remember when I was you know, working with, um, well, I had an editorial project with an international magazine and there was a text that it really amazed me because it was about women who wear the burqa, you know, the Arabic, the Arabic dressing that covers most of the woman's body. And we, as Westerns, of course, we think this is, this is violence against women. Yeah, well, why can't they express themselves and show their bodies. But that report in the magazine, which was in English as lingua franca, right? Was written in English, it was a worldwide magazine. It's a first class worldwide magazine. That report was bringing testimonials, was bringing, you know, talks from women saying, no, I feel valued when I wear that. I feel protected and I feel being part of a culture which is my own. So we need to be very careful when we are using the English language and teaching the English language not to be ethnocentric because ethnocentry leads us to biases, leads us to prejudice. And this is something we want to shun from our classroom. Well, great. So what we had up to now was, you know, we had two frameworks, the BNCC frameworks for the teaching of English and we had the Cambridge Life Competences frameworks, as we mentioned before. And as we can see, both of them list six specific competences which is, it may be a coincidence or it may be not. So the BNCC lists as competences for the teaching of English, identify one's place. So this has to do with identity, right? I need to be aware of my point in the world when I'm using the language. Mm -hmm. Communicate in several media, make the connection in my head between language, culture, and identity so I can build multicultural repertoires, use technology to express myself, and access diverse cultural heritages. These are the competences, specific competences aligned in the BNCC, while in the Cambridge Life Competences Framework, I also have these interesting aspects as creative thinking, critical thinking, learning how to learn, see how, the, how practical all these are. Remember, competences as being the application of knowledge. So learning how to learn, communication, collaboration, and social responsibility. See how all these competences are something that we apply into our world of work, into our communities, into our relationships with our friends and with the world. We could make several connections between these competences, right? I just have some connections that I made here as illustrations, but of course you can connect as you please. And there are many others that, you know, superimpose to each other. So, this is very complex, but it's, you see how intertwined this is. From these guys, what I did was detached something that I think is very, very important, which is, as the beginning of our talk uh, highlighted, identity and critical thinking. The BNCC 
Number one, specific competency for languages. Say that what we need to do is understand language as a human construct, which is historical, cultural, social, and dynamic. And value languages as a way of signifying reality and as the expression of subjectivity and of social and cultural identities. See how I highlighted identity, why I highlighted identity? Because here we were talking about subjectivity, which is self-identity, right? The way I see myself, the way I understand the world from my perspective, social identity and cultural identity. So we have three elements of the concept of identity here in the PNCC's first one competence for language. What is identity? What is identity? Yes? Oh, somebody said me, I can uh, use the, the question, question uh, and answer. I can't use the Q and A, I'm sorry. Not in the mood I am, I'm sorry. But this is a question for you. What is identity? Let's just think about it for 30 seconds. What is that? You know, identity is a concept that is underlying the frameworks of competences in national curriculums, in the, in the Cambridge Life Competences Framework. So what is identity? Good, Gonzalo, your personality, your culture. Thank you very much. Yes, the character. Yes, thank you, Thais. The character. Well, identity, guys, is the answer to the question. A mixture of self and society, who you are, yes. It's the question, the answer to the question, who am I, right? And it can be compound of three elements, like you said here in the chat, self-identity, which is a sense of a unique sense of what, how I see myself, yes? The attribute that I give to myself and how I interpret the world based on those attributes. Of course, it can be social identity too, because you know, my identity is also made on the way people see myself. So this includes my role in society, my profession, Yes, what I'm doing at the moment. Yes, sometimes I'm a teacher, sometimes I'm a writer, sometimes I'm a consumer, sometimes I'm a reader. Yes, sometimes I'm a follower on Instagram. Sometimes I'm a driver, but sometimes I'm a pedestrian. So all these are part of my social identity. And you see, this changes. This is very dynamic. Also the cultural identity, as you mentioned, right? Which is belonging to a group, belonging to a nationality. Yes, having a language, an ethnicity, my religion, my class, my generation, where I live, my location. And this is all very interesting because it just exists in face of the alterity in face of the other. So I can only say I'm a Brazilian because there is an Uruguayan, there is a Paraguayan, there is a Peruvian. So I'm a Brazilian in face of others. You see what I mean? And this is what is so beautiful about it. And well, we, to, in resume, we could say that identity involves the self, the social, and the cultural dimensions, correct? Great, but why? Why bring this to class, to the English class more specifically? Well, first of all, identity is a place where we can make sense of the world and cause an impact. So if we recall that 
the objective of educational systems is to make an impact, contribute to an evolving society in terms of fairness, in terms of democracy, in terms of diversity. Identity is a standpoint. For me to be diverse, People need to be aware of where they stay in the world and respect the others. And not only respect, but value the differences. Yes? With a strong sense of identity, young people are better able to focus on what matters to them. We need to, yes, to get somewhere, I need to know who I am. And based on who I am, what is my mission? Right? I used to teach prep courses, people who were preparing for, for the academic, preparing for vestibular, vestibular. We have this in Brazil. It's the entrance exam for the for, uh, undergraduate schools. And uh, what I know, you know, there, there were many students there. And what I noticed in contact with that people was it was much easier for students to get into very, very concord careers, careers that everybody wanted was very, it was much easier for these people to get in university if they really knew what they wanted. Because when you do know what you are and what you want, it's only a matter of having the steps. It's one step after the other. You may take longer, but you're gonna get there eventually because you know where you want to get. If you don't, things get much more difficult. And of course, uh, the development of identity, helping students develop identity is a powerful way to address historic, historic inequities. Yes, in education, inequities in terms of gender, inequities in terms of race, inequities in terms of uh, status, so many, yeah, inequities, so many inequalities that we need to address and we need to even. Okay, guys, are you with me? I hope so. I really hope so. We're getting there, we're getting there. Don't, don't lose me, okay? Well, we talked about identity. Remember, we detached two concepts, the concept of identity and the other one was critical thinking. And that's what we have in number four, BNCC specific competency for language, critical thinking. Look, use languages, uh, specific competency for language. There were six, remember? Number four, use languages to express points of view that respect others and promote human rights, social emotional awareness and responsible consumption in local, regional, global contexts, acting critically in face of the world's contemporary issues, acting critically. For me to act critically, I need, first of all, to have a mental process, yes? Critical thinking involves action, right guys? What is critical thinking? Wow, I love making questions, right? I think this is what being a teacher is all about, making questions, including to yourself, right? So including to myself, this is, this is what teaching is all about making questions, more than giving answers, right? So what is critical thinking? Can you tell me? Mental process, this is the key, yes. Ability to solve a problem, to problem solve. Uh, Gonzalo is very participative. Thank you, Gonzalo, yes. Well, critical thinking, can be said to be the understanding and analyzing ideas and arguments. That's one way to look at it. 
understand and analyze arguments and ideas, especially in the world we live today. Yes, where there is so much confrontation, where there is so much conflict. And we, as a human race, we are in a point, in a turning point. We need so desperately to work in tandem, to reach consensus, yes? So we can have a future for our children. This is paramount. Critical thinking is then evaluating ideas. So first you understand, analyze, and you evaluate like you judge. Is this positive for me or not? Am I into this or am I not? Solving problems and making decisions, right? So I think you covered this pretty much here in the chat. Thank you guys. Really, I agree with you guys. And when we think about critical thinking, uh, let me see if I can have just a second. Yes, I like this. I hope you see this red dot here. When you think about critical thinking, three topics recur and overlap because there, there is no consensus of what critical thinking is. Yes, there are many different theories. So what we have, these three themes, these three topics are, first of all, reflective thinking. This is, remember Dewey from the beginning of the 20th century. Yeah, the experience, yes. I like Dewey's writings about art, art as experience. So he mentions reflective thinking, which is the habit of always questioning my assumptions, you know, inquiring more deeply. But why, why am I thinking like that? Why am I acting like that? What are the grounds? What are the basis for my actions? And then a rational thinking, which is the most common aspect. This is what people relate more, yes? It has been more popularized, which is the ability to follow arguments in a logical way, right? As thought would be something that would one aspect would develop into another, into another, into another, into another. Rational thinking. And of course, reasonable thinking. Reasonable thinking, which is focused on deciding what to believe. Oh, this is great. Deciding what to believe and what to do. Because today, everything is possible, right? There are infinite truths. Yes, we live in the age of the post-truth. It's all about narratives. And we need to be critical about that and see how this relates to identity. Because I need to have some exemption of all the torrents of information that I have. And that exemption is pretty much based on my identity, which is dynamic and changes all the time. But it needs to have its principles. And again, thinking about us as educators, helping our students and in, you know, imbuing them with the notion that we need to make, we need to build a better society. We believe in building a better world, right? Otherwise, <laughs> why are we educators? Well, in resume, critical thinking is a mindset that involves thinking reflectively, rationally, and reasonably, correct? Great, but why bring critical thinking to class? Again, a question to you guys. Well, fosters learners autonomy and ability to think for themselves in this world. Yes, to develop awareness and empathy 
by noticing, understanding, and managing different points of view. Yesterday, I had an experience with a friend of mine. Here in Brazil, we were going through very uh, conflictual times in terms of political views. And I have a friend, he's my friend, and his political views are totally opposite from mine. To a point that hurts my, my principles. And what I've been questioning myself is how to be friends, how to keep being friends with that person. So what do I have to put aside? How should I negotiate? This is not simple. For me, it's difficult. That's because what should we put in first place? Trying to have a consensus, trying to manage our differences, trying to praise and respect friendship, even when your points of view are totally apart, is that possible? You see, this is reflective thinking. And see how this is a, a competency because it has immediate impact in my daily life because it's impacting my relationships, my friendships. Sometimes the conflict inside my own family Finally, we live in an age of misinformation, so only the critically minded can avoid to be manipulated, yes, or going through slavish conformity, okay? <laughs> yes, God is telling me, Paolo, it's 440. I'm sorry, guys. I'm really sorry. Well, thinking about all this, Cambridge University Press, has come with a great new textbook series for tens. Yes, for young people from 11 to 15 year old, which is called Game Changer. Okay, guys, it's a four volume textbook series and it brings all these concepts into life. Uh, originally, it has been, I, I have the pleasure and the honor to have been part of the team who produced, wrote, and edited this textbook series. And originally, it has been aimed at regular schools in Brazil, but I'm sure, and you're going to be sure too, once you get in contact with it, that you can use in every context for your teen students, all right? You don't have to be in a regular school. You don't have to be in Brazil, yes? If you have teens, from 11 to 15, and you want to address the topics that we are talking about here while you have clear and manageable user-friendly instructions on how to develop on the English language, English as an international or lingua franca, Game Changer is the textbook for you. And as an example, we start with this this unit opening here is unit five. It's called a day in the life. And of course it's a unit opener. We all know it's the time for us to raise awareness, bring previous knowledge about the topic. The topic here being a day in the life, it's everyday actions, right? It's habits. We are talking about simple present, expressions of frequency, things like that. So what do we bring there? There's a picture. In the opening of every chapter, there's a picture. In this case, there's this girl. And uh, tell me guys, how would you explore this image to raise awareness about this topic? Having in mind, having in mind, everything that we are discussing here about identity, and critical thinking. Are they available in Mexico City and in Chile? That's a good question that Katya will be able to answer you guys. Yes, a daily life, take a look at this picture. Well, as a teacher, what I would do over here, you know, I would bring up 
what students have already studied, right? So we could talk here, definitely, we could talk, for example, about colors. What colors do you see? We could talk about feelings and emotions. Yes, what emotions are expressed in this image? Talk about materials, <clears throat> yes? Brass, sand, cotton, silk, uh, plastic, all sorts of materials that I see in the picture, yes? About styles, we can talk about physical appearance, the color of eyes, the color of hair. All of this you are bringing from your students. Culture, yes. We can talk about culture. We can ask them, well, where is this girl? Of course, of course you're gonna have in the teacher's book the information that you need for that. But, you know, where is this girl from? Do we have anybody here from India? This, this girl is from the Rajasthan Desert in England, in, in India, yes? And what she's doing is she's bringing water. She fetches water and she brings water to her family on a daily basis. That's her job. And then based on that, look, we have this, this is an incredible, feature in Game Changer. We have this think box. And in this think box, we have two questions here, guys. Question number one, what is important in this girl's routine? And I forward this question to you. Please, if you can, answer me. What's important in this girl's routine? Can you tell me what is important in this girl's routine? Happiness. Oh, that's so beautiful. I like, thank you very much, Franklin. Happiness, I like that. What is important in this girl routine? Get water. Thank you, John. Water, yes, yes, that's my answer. Water is important in this girl routine. Can you imagine that, people? I don't know about the contexts that you teach in, but look, remember that I build my identity in face of others. So how does it sound for me to start thinking about a girl that has to dedicate a great part of a day, every day, just to get tap water or not even tap water probably, but drinking water or water for use of the family for cooking. And my students, do they have this? Do my students need to worry themselves about water? Well, in Brazil nowadays, we are going through the harshest hydric crisis in more than a hundred years. Yes, this wasn't happening when we wrote this chapter, when we wrote the books, but you see how important this topic is. So for this girl, she, you know, she dedicates part of her time just to fetch water for her family. She's a teenager. And my students, when I forward the question to them and say, what's important in your daily routine, are my students able to dedicate part of their days to their families and to their communities? Or are they at this stage, 11 year olds, are they just too self-centered to think about that? Of course, it depends on the context I'm teaching, but this is a serious issue. And see, what we want here is to have our students just, you know, thinking about their reality while they are making up their identity because they are comparing their lives with the lives of others while they are developing their critical thinking. And this is making up their identities. Guys. It's 4.50. 
I don't have too much time, so I'm going to skip. Unfortunately, I would like to be here with you for one more hour, but I'm going to skip. Lots of think box. Look, we, we have lots of think boxes here. Here we are telling facts from opinions. Yes, you are going to find this all through the series, guys. For me to close the presentation, I would like just to read this for you, if you allow me, please. I ask you five more minutes, if I can. This is an email, guys. Remember, we were talking about identity and critical thinking. This is an email. We have this in our textbook. Paulo, Padu, but email for teens. Teens don't write emails. Yes, teens don't write emails. But we work with genres, right? So if I have an email in my book, there must be a reason for me to have an email there. So let's try to take a look at this and see why we have an email. Look, it's a text, me, to dad. Subject, miss you. Dear dad, I hope this finds you well. We all miss you a lot. We are safe inside. Don't worry. Mom is working from home now and she's cooking better than ever. Grandma is fine in her apartment too. We're going to start online yoga classes together. Wow, but how about you, Dad? Sorry, your phone isn't working. Ah, so Dad's phone isn't working. At least you have your laptop, right? Is your new phone going to arrive soon? Ah, so dad doesn't have a laptop. Well, but we could uh, maybe talk on Zoom or a chat. Why an email? When are you going to come home? Uh, who, who is this dad? I hope you have a vacation after all this. Nurses need to rest too. In your swimming practice, are you going to go back to that? I don't know. It seems like life is suspended. That is a way. You're a great swimmer, Dad. Don't stop. Well, I'm sure about one thing. This pandemic is going to end. And I have so many plans for the future. I'm going to meet my friends every day. And we are going to go to the mall, go to the movies, play basketball, so many things. School is still closed, but classes are online. Our oh, classes online are okay. I miss my friends. I really want to see them. Meeting online is not the same. Believe it or not, I'm certain about two things. I'm certain. I'll be the best student in my class, that's a promise, right? And I won't say bad things about school ever again. Well, that's another promise. Dad, I changed my mind. I'm not going to be a professional athlete anymore. That's a plan. I'm going to be a scientist and help the world fight public health problems. Wait and see. Interesting, so this girl, Katie, she's writing an email to her dad who is a nurse and he's away from home because there is a pandemic and he has to be isolated from his family. If you remember the beginning of all this that we were going through, how things were and how concerned this medical staff were and the, all the strain and the stress over them. And what we have here, we have a, a girl and she's a simple girl and she's making plants. This we made a lot along all this time and promises using will and going to, right? I, I just love this. Sorry guys, this is amazing. And look, the think box about this. Yeah, that, that is a doctor and he's too busy. Yeah, he's away, Gonzalo, he's away. Look, think, do you think Katie's dad is an extraordinary person? The topic of the unit is extraordinary people. And we are used to having in textbooks, I don't know about you, but me, I'm tired of seeing movie stars. 
uh, soccer stars, stars of all kinds in textbooks. They don't need to be in textbooks. They already have their media. Our stars are the people who make real life. These are our stars. And that's the star here. So the question is, do you think Katie's dad is an extraordinary person? And do you think Katie, which is a regular girl, do you think she's an extraordinary girl? And by thinking about that, my student, do you think you are developing your identity strongly enough to consider and be able to see yourself as an extraordinary person? And you, dear teacher, have you been able in your practice with your students to see yourself in all of this as an extraordinary person? I'm sure you are. Well, I'm closing here. Again, why we do, do all this in our English classes? We want to foster transformation of society into something that is increasingly fair, democratic, and inclusive, environmentally sustainable. And we want our students to engage in taking part in this plural and globalized world. Yes? Bottom line, what we want, we want to build brighter futures together. I thank you so much. I'm sorry that I extended in time a little bit. You can have an executive preview over here, okay? And I couldn't say anything else, but thank you. If you need to get in contact, if you want to get in contact with me, please get in touch. You have on screen, you have my email address, you have my phone number in Brazil, it's 5555. 55. Uh, you can reach me in Brazil. There's also my website. You can visit me at www.padumachado.net. Katia, I'm back. Thank you, I'm sorry for the extended no, talk. No, no I, I could speak for more, Katja. You know, some I don't know what happens to me. I get, you know, I get involved in exciting subjects and I just keep going. I'm sorry. No problem at all. It's so good to see your to to feel in fact your enthusiasm and I'm sure the participants agree with me. So I see here in the chat lots of thank you messages to you. Thanks very much for this brilliant presentation, very enthusiastic. I, I, I'm sure teachers will close the week very feeling very powerful, let's say, and also reflecting on several things that you have presented. Uh, so I have posted in the chat the website for Game Changer so that you can check some more information on the series. This is the Brazilian edition of the material, Cambridge University Press has started working on an international edition that will be available in the future, right? We have also posted the link for our feedback and, and where you can get your certificate. Paulo, again, thank you very much. Thanks everyone thank you, for being here with us. And uh, stay tuned that we are going to have more when webinars of this kind soon. Thank you. Enjoy the weekend, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.